I emailed the High Clear Castle, located in Hampshire, England, and I like to ask these buildings directly what their history is, especially when the narrative doesn't give you exact dates of construction. So here's what happened. I said, hi, I am doing a project and just need to know what year did the construction start and end to actually build this castle? The second question, who was the architect? Third, which construction company was used? Now let's get some answers. They replied with, good morning, thank you for your email. May I firstly ask what the project is? So they obviously know that I'm onto them or else they would just simply answer the questions. They also say, you might find this blog entry helpful for your questions. So they're directing me away on some treasure hunt. So I redirect it back to them. I say, I've come across that information before, but was unsure of the exact start and completion date of the construction for this castle. I say, I can't seem to get a date anywhere which seems odd. They reply with, thank you, but again, Hi Claire is a private home. What is your talk about? So they cannot answer these simple questions. And this is when we press harder, because we know, because they have zero documented evidence proving exactly when this castle was built, because it was built by a previous civilization and they are occupying their work. So I tell them that I'm doing a project about castles and buildings that have incredible architecture. So they reply, it was first built in 749, which remember is 1,274 years ago. This is before the St. Mark's Basilica, which we were told was built in four years, in the year 800. So about 100 years before that, before people even knew how to make paper, this individual truly believes that this castle was constructed, no problem at all. So I press harder because we're gonna prove that this is all nonsense and that the castle itself has zero clue about the construction of its own building. I reply saying, okay, so construction began in 749, 1,274 years ago. That is incredible. And do you know when the original castle was completed then? And this is when a new person begins writing me and they are clearly unhappy about what we have exposed. Thank you for getting in touch, yes. There has been a house, which is actually a castle, not a house. So a castle on this site since then in various forms and rebuilds. Though I'm afraid that I'm not too sure when it was officially finished. So there we have it. They do not know when the construction dates are. And you can tell that they did not want to expose this because the next paragraph, they are basically threatening me, saying that if I make a video, in which to use any images, then I have to get in contact to discuss the copyrights with their legal team. So we're just gonna use Google Earth for this one, since they were so kind. And I then had to reply saying, wow, okay. So you guys have no idea about your own construction dates. Interesting. We have a lot of awesome stuff to go through today, including finding a building's photos from before the construction date. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. Welcome to episode 47 of my lunch break. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new, Welcome. And I want to thank all of our sponsors over on Patreon. Thank you to flatearthdave.com. You can check out his app. I'll put the link in the description and you can use my referral code MLB. The app is awesome. It shows a lot of videos that are really hard to find. They've got them all in great playlists. He also has my lunch break on the homeschool section of the app, which is really cool. Thank you for that. Thank you to Rebecca Kay, Don Gaston, Jason Brunson, Christopher Arietta, Maddie Kevs, The Lady Lacey Show, David and Sherry Ferguson, Edwin Johnson, DJ Click Track, Al Chen, Chuck Templeton, Dale, Edwin Rice, Joy Lee, Leslie Pipkins, PNR, Stephanie Nolan, and the Burlesons. You guys are all awesome and helping this channel out a lot. Okay, so I said in episode 45 that I was going to cover this St. Louis Art Museum that I went inside of. I had some other things that I needed to talk about in episode 46, so let's get into it right now. Let's go inside of a building that was built by a civilization before cowboys and Indians. A civilization that had incredible tools that we could only dream of today, that was able to construct massive cathedrals all over the world. Let's go inside their building and fully understand that they constructed this building. And I think that it's time that everyone knows that these incredible buildings were not built by our timeline. And our narrative is lying. When they say that people that were uneducated were able to build these insane projects in less than five years, all during the exact same time, 
for some random fair, and the buildings were so worthless that they could just knock them all down right after, which is the complete opposite of the truth. They are attempting to degrade this incredible construction and pretend like it was so easy, yet our civilization can't even build a sidewalk that lasts for 20 years. For anyone on the fence or anyone new to this topic, get ready to have your mind blown and see what the previous civilization was all about. So let's just go right into the basement. I don't even want to wait around. We have what they call the Stone Sea, where right here in the narrative, as a side note, they say the artist fabricated 25 arches, each measuring 10 feet high. He fabricated them? What a bizarre choice of words for a supposed construction process. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life. It's literally just sitting in this weird confined area that nobody can even really see anymore because they have built this new part of the building around it, hiding it from everyone and they even have the blinds pulled down inside. So you wouldn't even notice them if you didn't know what you were looking for. It's weird. It almost looks to me like these are charged magnets pulling an energy from the earth. So let's continue with the narrative. Where the supposed artist of these stones says that he was really trying to get underneath the skin of this place, to look beneath the surface of the site to what's there. The courtyard is being used in effect as a window into the ground. There is something strange going on here for sure. He continues on in the very next paragraph to say that bedrock isn't this dead static material, but it is something that is alive and moving. He said he wanted to reveal some of that fluidity that is in the ground. Now, in my opinion, Gladstone was briefed on this technology and some of the things that it does and was pinned as the artist. If this is true, that these are pulling an energy from the earth right here in St. Louis, then we are just getting started with finding out what the past civilization was capable of and what technology they were really in possession of. The situation that these things are in, these things are 100% still operational. They still work. And I'm going to prove this soon. And this is why they have boxed this modern structure around them so that nobody will even really notice that they are there. They are clearly not just art. They have a purpose and they are the past civilization's technology. There is an energy in St. Louis that the previous civilization knew about, and I believe that they still know about it today. So this is when Gladworthy admits that these are technology where the tight space compresses the sculpture and gives it tremendous energy. So let's get this straight. They are still using these and attempting to hide it from everyone by blocking it off with this new cafeteria. Incredible. I think the fact that they have hidden this from everyone with a brand new cafeteria is very telling. There isn't even that many people inside the building for it to need a cafeteria. It's very strange. Now we have the Trinity Church, which is incredible and clearly from the previous civilization. But I want to go deeper than just looking at this church. I want to look into the guy that supposedly drew it up, Henry Hobson Richardson. And here we are given a partial list of buildings where they tag this character as the creator. And it gets really weird when we go and click on this one, the Ames Monument. Look at how many massive buildings he was just knocking out in no time, in the exact same time frame, all on the east coast of the United States of America. And then all of a sudden, there is a slip up. He is pinned with something in Wyoming at the exact same time. And what do we have here? A pyramid, of course. And let's see where this thing is located because this is where things get very strange. Let's all take a look at this thing together, using our knowledge on the topic, using common sense and facts, remembering what the AI ChatGPT has told us about logistics. Here we go. Remember, he was not even close to Wyoming in 1878, 1879, or 1880. He was in Massachusetts, building the Sever Hall in 1878, building the Oaks Ames Memorial Hall in 1879. To 1881. So he knocked that one out with ease in just two years. It's very simple stuff in the 1800s when today this project would never be completed in less than 24 months. And we all know this. Oh, and how could I forget to mention that Sever Hall was also built in less than 24 months. Insane. He was also off building the rectory for Trinity Church in 1879 to 1880. So this one took less than 12 months. This isn't possible at this point. And we all know this. It's not even close to possible, actually. But because this is what they're telling us, let's keep going. He was also building the F.L. Ames Gate Lodge in 1880, which also wrapped up in less than 12 months. I think this guy deserves a statue and a holiday. This is incredible and a total lie. Stony Brook Gatehouse in the same year of 1880. 
took a solid year to complete, which is probably the only one that would make sense that it was built in a year if he had no other projects going on at the same time, but he did. Thomas Crane Public Library, also in 1880, built in less than a year, very easily since he, of course, had the supercharged horses and wagons, the twin turbo stallions, and he also had time to knock out houses for people. The Dr. John Bryant house in 1880, and there's no photo of this place, but here he was in New York as well, building the Albany City Hall in New York in 1880. And this one took a lot longer and was a struggle, taking a whole three years to build. How pathetic in the 1800s. No wonder we don't get a day off for work for this guy. Oh, now I know why it took him so long to get this thing done in 1880. The building was destroyed by a fire. So wait, oh, so they did get it done in less than a year originally, but the fire destroyed the whole thing. And a new design by Richardson was commissioned, of course. The cornerstone was laid by the local Masonic, uh, oh, did I say that? Fraternity in 1881. So they got this whole building all cleaned up and out of the way so fast in 1880 that they were ready to lay down the cornerstone in 1881. All the plans were ready to go. Very simple and easy 140 years ago. The building was completed and opened in less than 24 months. Winter was not an issue, of course. So yeah, just knocking out massive buildings very easily. And of course we get this fire story in there, which we all know what that is by now. If you are new here, you will enjoy learning about the fires throughout the first 46 episodes. It's a clear giveaway that the building is from the old world, a nod to their group. And right in the middle of all these incredible buildings that he is throwing together at rapid speeds, construction that we have never seen in the history of our lifetimes and never will see because it's not logistically possible. And we know this. In 1879, I guess he had some spare time to get out into the middle of Wyoming in the 1800s to build a random pyramid which was built to last forever. This is not logistically possible in itself, let alone with all these other buildings being built at the same time. But let's keep going. We have more reoccurring names, which we all know about at this point. Oh, and did I mention? We have a photo of this thing from May 6th, 1869, which is 11 years before it was said to be constructed. And they state that it was built by the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, yeah, that couldn't be any more contradicting. How is that acceptable? I personally could never look at this kind of information and fully trust the mainstream history ever again. It honestly is fairy tale stuff for adults at this point. Now I found some really cool pictures that I've been waiting to share with you all from the 1800s and they're very strange. They're so out of place and just totally looks like our new civilization is just completely lost in the photos. This one is from Boston on 88 Commonwealth Avenue. At some point in between 1890 and 1899, you have dirt roads. You have these people occupying these buildings that they have zero clue where it came from. And here we have a few photos of Boston in 1890. And where is everybody? I thought we were told that Henry Hobson Richardson was off knocking out massive structures for decades before this. Looking and sounding a little more strange now? We have all of these incredible buildings and no people. Why would you need all of these buildings for such a small population? You wouldn't. The previous civilization was here before. They constructed all of these buildings and they needed every single one of them. Here in Boston from the sky. It's obviously a drawing and not real from 1899, but look how the city is clearly laid out. It even has land that is perfectly formed right on the water. Here we have the Boston Public Library with dirt roads and of course, it's still here today, looking better than ever, exactly like our buildings that we build today. Oh no, not like our buildings today. In fact, nothing like them. And then I went on to the historic New England website and they have a page called Old Boston, which is pretty telling in itself. And the description here says, these are five images showing the development of Beacon Hill from drawings by J.H. Smith made on the spot in 1811 and 1812. The guy is depicting horses and wagons with nothing around and a huge mound that looks to me like they've dug this massive structure out from underneath the dirt. And this is one of the strangest pictures for me. It's from 1840 in Boston, where the population was only 93,000 people. And right before this photo in 1839, what do you know? Boston's Lunatic Asylum was established. Check out episode 13 if you're interested in that topic. Very interesting stuff. 
And people look so out of place. And they look like farmers. Nothing against farmers. But they're in a palace with dirt roads and horses. I'm not sure that I've seen many stranger depictions of the past than this one. If we zoom in on the massive building with incredible columns, we can see that it is the Boston Insurance Office. Well, we also know that this is from State Street, Boston. So let's have some fun and go even deeper. We have the four columns, exactly like the depiction from 1840. But can anyone see what is missing from the 1872 photo? Only 32 years later, something is missing. How about the entire bottom portion of this building? It's completely covered up. And the top of the building is also changed. So someone went in here and did something to these buildings and this area between 1840 and 1872. In 1862, we get the Boston Educational Commission to make sure everyone is being told what to think. And here we have the National Theater in Boston, where in 1852, the theater burned down, but they rebuilt it, thankfully, so that 11 years later, it could just be destroyed by another fire. And we all know about the fires. A great nod that this is an old world building. So we have this picture of State Street, and then we have an actual photo of the same street 60 years later in the year 1900. And everyone is still riding around on horses and wagons. This is another photo of State Street in Boston from 1850, where there aren't any people on the street. I think it's very important to share these photos so that everyone can see them. They're not easy to find anymore, which is interesting in itself. And in my opinion, these fully prove that we are correct. These photos are displaying a civilization that was so technologically weak, where they were riding around next to massive palace buildings, looking like, oh, I don't know, that they might be in the wrong timeline. And here is the same road with zero people again from June of 1875. And it gets even weirder when we see this photo from 1898. 23 years later, where they are digging up the dirt road with their incredible technology of shovels and wheelbarrows. And what is really going on here? Are they tearing apart the previous civilization's road that was under all of this dirt, hiding? These are massive and no ordinary brick. Comment below what you think this is. I think this is a destruction process, but would love to hear your ideas. And here we have this US post office building which was the first post office building in the city of Boston to be owned by the United States federal government. They knocked this one down to build the John W. McCormick Post Office and Courthouse. And this is where I found that they are fully lying to us. Remember in the beginning of this episode when I said I found something massive? Are you ready to see what I found? Here we go. We are told that the John W. McCormick Post Office and Courthouse was constructed between 1931 in 1933, but I have found a massive flaw in their story. And the flaw is that this building was not always called the John W. McCormick Post Office and Courthouse, and they have changed the name of it so that we would not be able to find it in the archives. I found out that this building was actually called the United Shoe Machinery Building. And I think we're becoming a serious issue for the mainstream history because I found the United Shoe Machinery Building in a photo from 1930. And that building is done. We were told that they built it in 1931 to 1933. And I didn't just find one photo. I found a lot of them. And this is incredible because this proves that we just need to go find what the building's name was before they say that they founded it. And it will then appear in the photos that predate the mainstream timeline. These buildings are older than we are told. And I think we found something massive today. And not only did they change the name of the building, but they have also changed the name of the street, with it being located at 50 High Street. And now the building has that street address erased from the side. So another thing for anyone new here and want to learn more about this topic relatively quick, check out my playlist that I've created. I called it MLB Top 11 Episodes. For now, that's what it's called. I might make it more than 11 over time. Recently on X, I posted that I found something insane. Something that will destroy the mainstream history. I've already started episode 48 in its production, so I think I'm going to put this one in episode 49. So I look forward to sharing that with you all. There's a lot more on the way. So if you like this kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button. In the next few weeks, I'm going to also be talking about airships, and that should be a lot of fun as well. Comment below if you have anything else to share or add to this. I want to thank all the badge members and Patreons, of course, for all of your support. 
you guys keep this channel running. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll be back very soon with much more. See ya. Don't trust what you see. Don't listen to your senses.